So today's video is going to be a really good one. We're going to test out that burner that we built the other day. We're going to have some fire, we're going to have some smoke, and we're actually going to have a lot of learning and a lot of thinking going on today. And let's start with the first step of all this was cutting everything out on the CNC machine. And of course, doing a bunch of sanding. So the goal of this project here is to hook a servo motor on my indexing machine. And it's actually quite a complicated process. At first, I thought it was going to be super simple. I was just going to make stuff out of foam, cast it, and boom, it's all done. But this is actually my sixth try at it all. And there's a lot to be learned out of this. So let's hang out for the next 15 minutes and take the journey on how I actually put this together and some of the challenges and trials that you might experience and stop a bit of that trial and error process that everyone has when they're learning to do something. The cool part about this whole project is, is this is all made out of regular insulation that you'd get from say the hardware store that you put in the walls of your house or underneath concrete. It's a dense foam that's easily worked with hand tools that pretty much everybody has on hand. And not only that, is after you glue it together with the hot glue gun, you can actually see if this part's actually gonna work or not. And it's gonna save a lot of that, say machining a big part out of aluminum, and then finding out there was a small little detail that didn't work, as we might find out later as I build this thing. What I'm working on right now here is, it's actually gonna be the tensioner for the whole pulley system. It's kind of an oversight when I was actually programming this all, and I didn't realize that I was actually going to have to tension this pulley. I thought gravity was going to do the job for me. But then I kind of started thinking about torque and all that kind of gravity and science and physics and stuff, and I realized that it wasn't going to work quite as I had expected. It's a good thing I built this before I built it, you know what I mean? Like I said earlier, you can work this with regular hand tools. In fact, the sandpaper is a lot more effective than you might actually expect. Yes, I'm kind of cutting a chamfer off in the corner here, but it's as easy as taking it over to the belt sander and really giving it that fine tuning and then kind of really polish it up, probably with some 100 grit sandpaper. And you can really carve some nice radiuses in there and really make this kind of shine. Although I will kind of warn you, if you have any sensory kind of deficits, like fingernails on a chalkboard or this sound that you're hearing now, you might have to get some really good hearing protection. The one thing that I actually noticed was using it on the belt sander, and I will warn you on this as well, using it on the belt sander creates a lot of really kind of toxic dust. And you're gonna wanna wear like a, say a P100 respirator for this or even better. And then also on the belt sander, you're also gonna notice that it takes it away not only fast, but it takes it away almost too fast and you have a bit of a trouble getting proper radiuses on it. So another challenge that I also had on this as well is interferences. Now, because I built this and actually could see it, I could see where the interferences were actually gonna happen and I wasn't gonna have quite enough play in there, which was easily fixed right now before we actually got it out to the aluminum phase and it saved me a lot of time at the milling machine trying to cut in weird angles and convexes. While well, I'm kind of polishing up some of these corners here, let's talk about how we fit everything together. Now, this is kind of really cool arts and crafts. I went into the house and stole my son Terry's glue gun and it's as easy as gluing the stuff together. Now, you're gonna to wanna to get a low heat glue gun. If you get a really hot glue gun, it's actually gonna melt little divots into it and could ruin your work. This glue gun I'm using here is a dollar store glue gun and it's probably like three bucks. But the cool part about it is, I guess aside from me worrying about it when I'm not around and it burning my shop down because I bought it at the dollar store, is the fact that it's not actually gonna burn my fingers. You watch here, I lick my fingers and I'm actually kind of blending in everything. If you watch here, is I'm actually creating fillets or I'm blending in a bunch of the big cracks that you'll see. Like for example, here on the back side, it's probably a 16th of an inch crack that's easily filled and blended in with a fillet. I highly recommend when you're actually starting to glue stuff together is, is take a really good look at stuff. And if there's a little tiny crack, the chances are that sand's gonna get in there and it's gonna make it look pretty rough later on down the road. So spend the two minutes now and have a really good look over things before you take it out to the casting yard because two minutes now could save you two to three hours later trying to fill something in or redoing your part. Let's now blend some of the stuff in together 
and kind of give it a really good look over and see how this bad boy is going to look. And like I said earlier, I'm really glad I did this lost foam casting and actually building the model before I did this because they caught a lot of problems down the road. Now, the only thing I have to do is glue on this kind of little mushroom thing. And this is where all the material is going to come in, the molten aluminum that is. And speaking of molten aluminum, I better get out to the yard and start the process of melting everything down. Hey, also, if you haven't checked out the oil burner video, you should check that one out. I'll probably throw it in the link at the end of this. It's a really easy way to get melted aluminum super quick without building anything complicated. One of the things that I'm kind of experiencing today is the minus zero weather, minus zero Celsius that is. And a lot of the little bit of moisture that's in the sand has frozen all the sand together, but I don't think this is gonna slow me down too much. I'm just gonna scrape away what I can get and we're gonna use that. So if you're new to lost foam casting, this is how the process is gonna work. I'm gonna put a little bit of sand on the bottom of the barrel and then I'm gonna bed this foam down in there. Then I'm gonna sprinkle stuff on and I'm gonna not pack it down quite yet. I'm gonna be very, very careful that I'm not actually warping the material because keep in mind it's foam so it could easily kind of bend the material and if I bend it and then pack the sand, I'm gonna have a bent part in the end. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna say this again because if you're new to lost foam casting, there's no binder in here we're going to heavily rely on vibrating the sand here in a couple minutes. And by vibrating the sand, it's going to actually hold it all down and keep it all solid. It's pretty simple. I'm just using a recip saw with no blade in it, and I'm letting it vibrate on the top of that metal tin there. This metal tin cost me, I don't think, like 10 bucks or something at Princess Auto, and it's going to be pretty much a throwaway after maybe 20, 30 casts. But that's okay, because for 10 bucks divided by 10, that's a dollar a cast, and honestly, I can't even imagine what it would cost to buy this part or have someone else make it. So probably a really good cost to do in business. So one of the things that I forgot to mention here is that soup tin that I threw in there. See the one on the top? Now, that's going to be the catch basin for the top of the sprue. Because all of the sand is porous, all of the gases are going to come out through the sand and kind of get filtered out that way. And when we pour this, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we keep that soup can full the whole time, because if we let it go dry for like, say, even half a second, all that sand's gonna collapse on it and we're gonna lose our mold. I've got this aluminum just a little bit hotter than I normally pour it, say for regular sand casting, because this foam is gonna take a bit of heat away from it as it burns and gets replaced by all that really cool aluminum making a really cool part. Speaking of that, Let's take a second here and focus on what we're doing and pour this all out. Now, like I said earlier, you're going to want to really make sure that that cup stays full the whole time. And to tell you the truth, even though I have that mask on right now, it's not really doing a heck of a lot because it's the wrong type of mask. And we're going to cover that here in a couple minutes and tell you which mask I'm using and I feel to be the safest one. I'm gonna knock all that slag out of the bottom there and throw that back in there. And then let's dump all that sand out and let's have a quick look at how everything went. I'm feeling pretty good about this. This grate that I've got here and the job box below it are pretty much an essential thing, I think. The job box is gonna store all of your sand dry. So next time when you pour something, you're gonna have the part that you want. Let's review this whole process one more time for you in case you didn't catch it the first time. I've got probably about four inches of sand on the bottom of the pail, and then I'm just gonna bed this down here nice and tight, but I wanna make sure that I don't warp it. Then I'm just gonna throw the sand right on top of it, okay? Then I'm gonna grab my trusty old recip saw, and I'm gonna vibrate the living bejesus out of the top, the bottom, and everywhere I can, probably for about two or three minutes, just to, to make sure that everything's kind of packed itself down. Then on goes the soup tin. Let's start up the foundry and get her running. Well, she's starting a little cold this morning and not quite running as best as I'd like it, but I've kind of figured out as long as the diesel's warm, I don't get a situation like this. So basically warm diesel equals running proper. Hey, back to filters. Let's talk about this here for a second. I'm swapping out my P100 dust filter for a P100 slash organic filter. This is probably the way to go in my eyes. It filters out some of the chemical, you know, gases that are in the air, but not all of them. 
keep in mind, because we're superheating metal and we're burning diesel and we're burning foam, there's a lot of different chemicals that may come off of this flying around in the air and we want to protect yourself as much as we can. We wear safety gear like, say, boots and whatever, and we want to make sure we wear this mask. Also, while this is kind of off-gassing, I'm also holding my breath. I'm not relying 100% on my mask to protect me from all of this off-gassing that's happening. A best case scenario is when you're pouring like this, if you can have a bit of a breeze and you put the breeze to your back, that's probably your best option. So your best case scenario, if you want the best results, is to let this cool down for quite a while. I only waited five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, and it just isn't long enough, and you're gonna see a bit of warping if you take it out too early. So the longer, the better. Let's have a look and see what we got here and see what we have to work with. Now, on first glance, everything looks fantastic. There's a couple little tiny flaws, but I was ready to actually work my way through them. But as I'm progressing through this and cleaning and inspecting the parts, we found some problems. And that's right, there's a laminar problem. When the aluminum poured in from this side, it went around both sides around the corner here. Now, in the middle, it actually joined up. And one of the problems that we're having here is an oxidized layer that the two sides aren't actually bonding. You can see this again over here on this side. Now, this is really important because this caused me to have quite a bit of concern. At first, I thought, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna weld this up or I'm just gonna kind of just let it buck. But then the better side of me said, you know what? I'm gonna spend my Saturday morning and I'm gonna make sure this is done absolutely right. So back to the drawing board. And if you actually looked at that part here, you'll actually notice that this time I actually put a groove in it where it's actually gonna clamp around that round shaft. And I'm wondering if anybody knows what I had for lunch today. <laughs> Dinner for two, the fine dining with the wife. I can't figure out why she wasn't impressed. Now, let's kind of melt this down here and see if we can make another part and ace it this time, unlike my lunch that I had. This time I got smart. My buddy Dean gave me a whole ton of aluminum and I was running pretty heavy with all the aluminum I had. So I had enough aluminum to pour both of them at the same time and I didn't have to scrounge around the shop. And I got the wind on my back today too. Now you're gonna notice me dancing between these two pours and I'm just trying to keep these both kind of tins full just so that it doesn't run dry. Remember, if this tin runs dry, the sand collapses and all kinds of sadness. And you know what? There's no sadness in my future here because I'm pretty sure we aced it this time. And you're gonna have to look forward to some of my other videos where we actually machine this, and actually fit it up and put that servo motor on. But for today, we're gonna call this done because I'm super duper happy with this part. Let's have a look at the other part, see what it looks like as well. One of those things as well, a learning point I can offer you is those half inch holes that I thought I was saving a ton of time. Well, it was kind of a waste of time because the foam actually distorted enough that the holes weren't gonna line up just perfect. However, it's pretty easy to drill a half inch hole. Now I just gotta get the Milwaukee bandsaw out and hack off those sprues. And we just need to take her over the milling machine and machine it up. Hey, it was really cool hanging out with you today. And if you like this video, Check out the burner video I got up here on the top left, or check out this other video that you might like as well. And we'll catch you on the next video. Have fun, get out to the shop, and make some chips.